Morning, just want to talk today about sustainability in terms of shelter, our buildings. Really critical area buildings are a big part of our natural resources use and also quite frankly a place where we're, we're out of focus, we're not very sustainable. So um, we're going to look at the principles of sustainable building and then the next lecture is we're actually going to look at our green building case study here at the Sustainable Learning Center. So we're going to actually go through the actual process of doing it. Um, out of sync, the United States uses 65% uh, of its electricity on, in buildings. Um, electricity is a big problem in this country. We know that we're overusing fossil fuels and this is a, this is a serious problem. So we want to have building strategies that are in harmony between the people side and the ecosystems. What we've done in so many areas of, of sustainability is we've kind of discounted ecosystems and their value, those natural resources. So it extends beyond the environmental costs. We all know that Buildings uh, clear a lot of habitat, country, they, they cause pollution. We want to look also at some of the economics of it. It's a lot cheaper in the long run to build this way. And the life cycle costs are way better. Uh, way, they last longer, so therefore it costs less in the long run. And we want to improve the health and the safety of the occupants, right? Um, a lot of our homes we, we're in now um, can give off toxic fumes and all sorts of things and mostly it's the quality of life. We're sitting here in our sustainable built uh, straw bale house that my wife and I built um, over about eight years and it's incredibly uh, fun and has enhanced the quality of our life tremendously. Um, we're out in a really precious little valley out here and it's just a great place to live. I, we feel ownership of all of this because all back to the natural plaster walls, straw by a wall behind me here, we actually plastered that. And that is amazing. And it was not as cheap as we thought it was going to be, but it was cheaper than if we built what we call here in the United States a stick built house out of two by fours. So um, definitely want to think about cradle to cradle going through the full life cycle, we're a very straight throughput economy. We use something, we get tired of it, and we throw it away. And we can't keep doing that. We're running out of the basic resources, and we have serious issues with pollution and landfills. Um, and we need to also make sure we enhance the environmental size as, and, and respect that that's part of our life support system. Not just the man-made part, but we also need to enhance what we call the natural capital, the soil, the air, the water. And we also need to look at how we wired. Um, at this picture here, um, you've got the western feel, and, and for us, the, the cross and, and the Christian faith is really important. So you need to be able to build those into your home because that's who you are. Solutions grow from place, so depending on where you, you situate the house, where it is in a desert. One quick example here is we have a big hill behind the house here. We're on a north facing slope and um, we decided to dig the house back into the hill for it to be earth protected because the earth here will maintain a pretty constant temperature year round. The jackrabbits discovered that a long time ago. Um, we need to think about the eco ecological accounting. We need to look ahead and not use materials too much that are going to have a big environmental impact now and in the future. Concrete, cement is, a, is an issue um, in the sense that we produce cement locally. Right behind us here we have cement uh, mines limestone mines, but on the other hand, cement needs to be used in a balanced way because it produces a lot of CO2 in its production just by, by the nature of the limestone. Uh, design with nature. 
So again, try to fit in with your local ecosystem. Uh, we've tried to do that in terms of the color and making the, some of the walls look a little bit like the granite outcrops that we have around here. Um, and you need to make nature visible. You need to be able to see nature from it. So we've been fortunate right over to our left here, big windows, and be able to be right stuck in the middle of nature. And that's why we didn't clear anything around this house. All the natural Joshua trees are incredible symbol locally here of our communities are still very visible. Um, so modern ecosystem, modern construction works against the ecosystem, earth and nature. Green building does the opposite and it's more sustainable. And we just need to rethink our building choices. Like I said, a lot of this has just become what we're used to. We're used to being able to pick up a nail gun and slam together wood walls. Well, we need to look at uh, whether those 2x4s have been sustainably harvested, for example, and whether that's really the best use, or is it better to use a recycled straw bale to, to make our walls. So here we go, kind of a nightmare. Um, that's how we do it now. It works, it's what we're used to. I think we've kind of got into a habit. In fact, a funny story is we struggle. We have several contractor friends, great people. They struggle with the idea of using straw bales and using clay and horse manure and sand as a plaster. Lots of these things. And then the recycling. In fact, a lot of our recycled materials we got from traditional builders. Dream house. So, you know, this is what we're trying to do. Um, it's kind of like your clothes. It's really important. It's a part of you. And, you know, you need to think about what your dream house is. Is this your dream house? Or is it one of those 6,000 foot monstrosities that you see going around all, all over the place? Um, it, again, you need to rethink your values a little bit in terms of what you really need. Uh, we started off as a 700 square foot house here, but um, my wife's, Tammy's idea of a dream house was something where family could visit and we could have it more as a place where we could have big gatherings, which has worked out great because we've heard, held a lot of gatherings, Easter services, um, and things like that, workshops, and then, but we needed more space. So we ended up with a, a home that's 2,000 square feet. So it's, again, not crazy big, but now that we're confined to it over the COVID-19 thing, it, it feels plenty big. Uh, there's lots of room. Okay, I'm um, going to go through this kind of quickly. Um, the human body analogy is a nice way to think about it. Your house is, you've got the supporting structure, um, and then you've got to create the inner atmosphere. Um, that's creating a stable temperature, storing heat, things like that. And we try to replicate these in houses. Um, most of all, important uh, things to think about um, is we need to work with nature. Nature recycles everything. There's natural cycles for all the main nutrients and main minerals. The one we're looking at here is the carbon cycle. And we're looking at just one part of it, which is where, you know, the plants through photosynthesis take the sun's energy solar energy, also again a big principle of sustainability, using the sun as much as possible, and recycle it. That goes through the animal. We, in this case, it's a dairy cow, so we, let's say, drink the milk, and it all gets recycled around through carbon dioxide, which is in turn taken up through photosynthesis and made into glucose, and, and it's a complete cycle. Well, our building should follow that. And, you know, in this case, we did some of that. We recycled all our furniture yeah, into, you know, into our cabinets. We recycled the, the ceiling is an old, is metal from old, uh, from an old cow barn. Um, we recycled straw bales uh, it, it, uh, into, into walls. So we worked with these natural cycles instead of against them. Okay, human analogy, skip over that. Why do we do all this? Well, sustainability is about the kids. And these are some 
wonderful Zulu kids from where I grew up um, and we need to leave something uh, special for them and is it all doom and gloom are we gonna fry up with global warming I really don't believe it but I do think we need to start rethinking how we do things and how we live because um, we do have the technology we do have the science mostly it's the thinking and the social structure to make that, uh, make these changes happen because we do need to change. Five basic traits um, of, a, of a green, sustainable design house, ecosystem design house. It has low construction impact. Um, you minimize the impact on the building site and environment. Uh, we came and sat out here on this on this property is one of the places I rode my bike quite a bit and just got a feel for it so that we made the minimum impact on the land. Uh, resource efficiency. We need to be super efficient with heating, cooling, water, electricity. Um, and we've, for example, in water, we've got a gray water um, system where everything except the toilets goes out, back out onto the plants. Um, as a gray water system it needs to be long lasting and uh, if you as you see later this thing is really well, well built huge metal beams they're mostly recycled metal and it's it's very very strong we, we had a decent earthquake last summer and we had a little bit of a little bit of peeling off some plaster but not even a hint of anything beyond that straw bales really flex very well apart from anything else. It needs to be non-toxic. Um, uh, it needs to be beautiful and in tune with the character. So we've covered most of those already. Um, so getting there, we're people on the move. We don't take the time. We'd rather just go back and uh, and you know go and go around with a real estate agent and get a mortgage that we probably can't really afford. But um, you know, it's this, your home is a place to build community. We're so fortunate here because we had so many people that we kind of cajoled and probably tricked some of the time to come and help us. But we built a tremendous amount of community to where so many people have a connection with, with this building and it's fantastic. And, uh, and it ch requires a change of lifestyle. You have to turn lights off. You have to maybe move a generator around. Um, you need to go check the voltage on your batteries. You need to maintain your batteries. All sorts of things like that. So what are the, what are the altern alternatives? Well, alternatives are pretty sad. I think, you know, living right next to someone, uh, I understand that and it's, it's a good thing in terms of keeping housing pretty compact. But um, we, if you have an opportunity, I think we can just rethink things a little bit. Not everybody has this opportunity, but um, so make it into a home, not a commodity, is probably the take home. And here we are, um, you've got your classic Joshua trees there on the left. This is just off to the side of the house, and then over to the right, Tammy and I with the, our dog Tombi, with the foundation in the background, um, with the actual radiant floor heat in place, and then the spectacular place this is. This every spring, um, this place just comes alive. It's it's alive all the time with all kinds of wildlife, but it comes especially alive in the spring, and it, it's just such a a treat. Those flowers there and those Joshua trees are literally right outside the house. They on the slope. They, you know, you step out, and five feet later, you need to make sure you're not tromping on them. Um, so the process, and we're going to go through this again as, as our own little case study, but get in touch with your feelings, your reasons you started your search. What are you looking for in a home? What do you really need? Then create general strategies, you know, how, what kind of a home is it going to be and what sorts of skills do you need to learn? We went to a straw bale workshop to learn how to do straw bales actually super simple I think most people could learn easily learn from a video and then you got to be, begin planning and designing make sure that you've got planning in place long-term planning don't start too soon we 
We do a lot of that because you're forced to, to get a building permit in California. But there was a few things that we went into before we'd really thought it through. And uh, there's a few situations where we would have changed some things. And then most of all, have fun. There's just some kids um, working on a straw bale wall and um, having a lot of fun throwing mud at each other. So make it fun. So over and out, be back real soon with more more cool green building stuff. Get your 